you will learn how to create a video call like this and for this we will use the agora package this is the application you will be able to build at the end of this video it's a real-time communication video call and we will use the flutter agora package for this the first step is to add in the dependency, the Agora RTC engine, and the permission handler. RTC means real-time communication. After you can run the Flutter pub get, now it's time for the code of the application. First, you will need to create two folders, one called pages and one called utils. Inside the pages, you will create a file call.dart and one index.dart. In the call.dart, we will just start with a simple stateful widget. And this is very simple. We have the scaffold fold the app bar with the text agora and the center title through but we will also make sure to import the package agora rtc engine and we will need to add two arguments the first one will be the string channel name this one will come from the index.dart and we will have also the client role which is either the broadcaster or the audience you will need to add this inside the constructor so we have this the channel name this dot role and now we have set up the call.dart page we will code more inside this file later now we will go inside the index.dart and we will create also a simple stateful widget. This one will be called index page. And you can see that we have a simple scaffold with an app bar and the title saying Agora. With this, we can go inside the main.dart and we can import the index.dart. This will allow us to create a home with the index page. And this is what you will have on the screen right now if you have the primary swatch to color green. Once you have this, you will need to go inside the YouTube Utils and create a file settings.dart. In this one, you will have a constant app ID and a constant token. I will show you right now how to get this information from Agora. For this, you will need to go on agora.io and log in into your own account. If you don't have one, you will need to create an account. After this, you will need to create a project with Agora, but I will show you how to configure this project. So you will click on config and you will see that you have a primary certificate and a secondary certificate. So what I did is I activate both of them and then you will have the generate temporary RTC token and you will click on this. Now you can create a channel name. I will call this one Flutter Map and I will generate a token. Because I am on testing, this token will be available for a couple days. So I will copy this token and I will paste it inside the to-do. And to be clear, you should not use the same token as I use. You should create your own token. After this, we will need the app ID. If you go back inside your project, you will see that you have the app ID and then you can just copy this. If I go back in the code, I will replace the to-do with my app ID. Again, you should use your own app ID. Okay, so this was all the setup we had to do. Now we can code the application. We will start with the index.dart. This is the page that you can see on the application right now. First thing first, we will import multiple things. The first one is the Dart async, the Dart developer, the package Agora RTC engine, the permission handler, and the file call.dart. Now it's time to create variables. We will create a final channel controller. This will be a text editing controller and we will use this for a text field after we will create a boolean validate error we will set this as false we will create a role which is a client role dot broadcaster when you connect yourself to a video call you can either be a broadcaster or an audience the broadcaster will share a video and the audience will just listen to all the video happening now we can create a dispose method and we will have the channel controller that dispose because we want to remove it as as soon as we don't use it anymore. For the body of the scaffold, we will create a single child scroll view. This one will have a container. The padding will be edge and set symmetrics horizontal 20. The child will be a column. And inside the list of children, we will have first the size at box height 40, the image network, another size at box with height 20, a text field. This one will give the channel controller that we have created. The decoration will be an input decoration. If there is an error, then we will display channel name is mandatory. Otherwise, it will be null. So this will show us an error only if the validate error is true. Next, we have an underline input border with the border side at one and the int text is channel name. Under this
this widget, we will create a radio list style. The title is broadcaster. When we click on it, this will give us a new client role value. And we will set state and say that the role is now equal to the new value. For the radio list style, you will also need to have the value, which is the client role dot broadcaster and group value which is the role. And this is what you should see on the screen. With this, we will create another radio list style, but this one will be for the audience. The unchanged will give you a new value. We will set state and say that the role is equal to the new value. This one will be the client role dot audience and the group value will be the role. You can see that you can now change between broadcaster and audience. Under this radio list style, we will create an elevated button. When we press on this, this will trigger the unjoin function. We will create this one right after. The child will be a text join and the style of the button will have the minimum size with the size double infinity and 40. Now we need to create the unjoin function. So we will say that this is a future void and you need to make sure that this is async. Inside we will have a set state and first we will say if the channel controller the text is empty, which means if there is no text inside the text field, then we will say that the validate error is equal to true and otherwise the validate error will be false. So we will have an error if there is nothing inside the text field. After this we will say if the channel controller the text is not empty, then we will await a handle camera and mic. We will create this later also. Inside this one, we'll put the permission camera and we will do the same thing, another handle camera and mic, but this permission will be for the microphone. Again, we will create this function very soon. Once we have the permission, we will say navigator.push. We put the context and the material page route. The builder will return the call page. And inside, if you remember, we need to put two arguments, the channel name, and the channel name is actually the channel controller that Text. This mean is the value that the user have put inside the text field. And the role is the one defined by the broadcaster or the audience. Okay, so let's create the handle camera and mic. This one is a future void and we receive the permission, which is either the camera or the microphone. This will be an async and you will say that the status is equal to await the permission dot request. You can after log the statue if you want to see it in the console. So this will request the permission for the camera and the microphone. If we try it right now and I click on the join button, you will see that we have an error message saying that the channel name is mandatory. So if I put a channel name and I click on join, this will trigger the permission request for the video. So I will say yes. And it will also request the permission for the microphone. I will also accept. And this will bring us to the second page, which is the call.dart. And now it will be time to work on the call.dart file. Before we start working on the call page stateful widget, we will add all the imports. The first one is the dark async. After we have the Agora RTC engine as RTC local view and the Agora RTC engine as RTC remote view. We will also import the utils settings. Inside we have the app ID and the token. And now we are ready to work on the call page. First, we create the final users. This is a list of int. The final info string. This is a list of string. The Boolean mute set as false. The Boolean view panel set as false. The late RTC engine called engine. And we create an overwrite init state. This one will need to initialize something that we will create later. We have also a dispose method. This one will clear all the users inside the list, leave the channel of the engine, and finally destroy the engine. It's now time to create the future void initialize that is inside the init state. This one is async. And inside we will say if the app ID is empty, then we will set state the app and we will add inside the info string. The app ID is missing. Please provide your app ID in setting.dart. We will also add inside the info string Agora engine is not starting. So this is what you will see on the screen if the app ID is empty and we will return absolutely nothing. But if the app ID is not empty, then we will need to do two things. The init Agora RTC engine and the add Agora event handlers. For the first one, we need to set up the engine. So we will say that this is equal to RTC engine.create and we put the app ID inside. With the engine, we can now await and say enable video. 
then await the engine again and set the channel profile. Inside we will say channel profile broadcasting. The last one will be to await the engine and set the client role. The role will come from the index page as you can see when we choose broadcaster or audience. Now for the add agora event handler, we create a function add agora event handler that we will create later. Under this one, we have the configuration that is the video encoder configuration. We will need to set up the dimension of this one. So we'll say video dimensions with a certain width and height. Next, we will await the engine and set the video encoder configuration. Inside, you just put the configuration that we just created. Under this one, we will say await engine. Now we need to join the channel with the engine. And this one take inside the token, the channel name, optional information, and optional UID. So we will give the token coming from the settings, the channel name coming from the index page, the optional information will be null, and the optional UID is zero. It will be time to create the add agora event handler. So we will say void. Inside we have the engine.set event handler. We put the RTC engine event handler inside, and this will give us a access to an error and a code. First, we will set state and say that the information is equal to error with the code. We will add inside the info string, the information of the error. Under this, we will create a join channel successful. This will give us access to the channel, the UID and the elapsed. But inside we will just say set state. The info is now equal to join channel, the name of the channel and the UID and add inside the info string, the information. We will do the same logic for pretty much everything. We will say if someone leave the channel, then we will set state and add inside the info string that someone has leave the channel. We will then clear the users inside the list. If a user join a channel, then we will have the UID and the elapsed. We will set state. We will say that the information is the UID UID. Inside the info string dot add, we will add the information and we add the UID of the user inside the users list. The next one is about the user offline. So we will set state. The information will be the UID of the user saying the user is now offline. Inside the info string, we will add the information and make sure to remove the UID inside the users list. We have also a first remote video frame. For this, we set state again and we say that the info is equal to first remote video with the UID, the width and the height. We will store this information inside the info string list. Now we need to create a widget view row and we will use this one inside the scaffold. Let's create a final list of stateful widget called list. Inside this one we will say if the widget role is currently equal to a broadcaster, then we will add inside the list the RTC local view dot surface view. And then we will do a for loop with the ID of each user. Inside the list, we will add the RTC remote view dot surface view. Inside we put the UID of the user. The channel ID is coming from the index page. Under we will say that the view is equal to the list that we just created. We will return a column. This one have a list that generate inside the children. For the length, it will be views dot length. And this will generate expanded widget. The child will be the views of the current index. In very simple words, this widget will generate on the screen the video of each users. The next widget we need to create is a toolbar widget. This one will be used to have a mute button and a switch camera button. So we will say if the widget role is equal to an audience, then we will return absolutely nothing because we don't want the audience to see this information. But if it's a broadcast, you will see a container with an alignment bottom center and a padding vertical 48. The child will be a row with the main axis alignment center. The first widget is the raw material button. Inside you have the unpress function and we will set state and say that the muted is now equal to the invert of muted. Then we will say engine dot mute local audio stream with muted set as true or false. The child will be an icon. If it's currently mute then the icon will be mic off 
otherwise it will be mic. The color will change either if it's mute or not, so it will be white or blue accent. The size is 20. The shape of the material raw button will be a circle border with an elevation 2. And the fill color will be if it's currently mute, then it will be blue accent, otherwise it's white. The padding will be an edge and sets all 12. Now we need to create another raw material button. This one will have the unpress function navigator pop context. The child will be an icon, call end. The color will be white, the size 35. The shape is a circle border again, the elevation 2. Fill color is red accent and the padding is 15. The last raw material button will be a non-press function that say engine the switch camera. The child will be an icon, switch camera. The color is blue accent, the size 20, the shape circle border. The elevation 2, fill color white, and padding, edge and sets 12. We need to create one last widget, and this one is the panel. This widget will show you on the screen what happened behind the scene. So you will return a visibility widget, and it will be visible only if the view panel is true. The child will be a container, the padding symmetrics vertical 48, the alignment bottom center, the child is a fractionally sized box, the height factor is 0.5, the child is a container with a padding symmetric vertical 48. Inside we have a list view dot builder. The list will be reverse true. The item count will be the info strings dot length because this will display all the information of the info string list. The item builder will have the context and the indexed. If the info strings list is currently empty, then it will return a text null. Otherwise, it will return a padding with the edge and set symmetrix vertical 3, horizontal 10, and the child will be a row with the main axis size minimum. The children will be a flexible widget with with a container inside and the padding symmetrics vertical 2 and horizontal 5. The decoration will be a box decoration, the color white, the border radius is circular 5, the child is a text, and the text is each element of the info string list. We will set the style of the text with the color blue-gray, and now we need to add those widgets inside the scaffold. Inside the app bar of the scaffold, we will add inside the actions the icon button. When we press on this, this will set state and say that the view panel is equal to the invert of the view panel. The icon will be an info outline, and the background color of the scaffold, because usually when you join a call, it's cool to have the black background just before you see all the video loading on the screen. The body will be a center widget with a child stack, and the list of widgets inside will be first the view row, the panel, and then the toolbar. And this is all the three widgets we have created earlier. And with all this, you can either join as an audience and you will see what happened on the video right now, or you can come back and join as a broadcaster and you will see two videos in this way. The first one is because I don't have any camera connected to this virtual device. And the second one is the camera coming from my physical phone. And you can see that you can either mute yourself or switch the camera that you currently use. If I use the back camera of this virtual device, this is what I will see. You can also click on the button in the app bar to see what happened with the panel. And you will see what happened behind the scene. So by example, the user is offline, the first remote video, user joined, and all the information behind the scene. If you don't need it, you can just click again on the button and you will not see it anymore. So this was how to create a video call with Flutter using the Agora plugin. That's it for this one. See you in the next video. Bye.